uh, on the agenda. Cliff? Yes. I would just like to remind everyone, if you're not already aware, and uh, not remind anyone I'm making you aware, uh, but I know the staff board is aware, uh, the annual meeting of the Friends of the Callis Town Hall is this Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, it's a new session, and uh, Barbara's been posting it to uh, Front Porch Forum, so you can look there to see the Zoom connection if you want to join the meeting. Um, the purpose of the meeting primarily is to advise the public of what we've been doing over the past year, as well as elect uh, board members. There's um, some new people who are going to be joining the board, who will be nominated. Um, and of course, we always open the floor to nominations as well. So I encourage everyone to join us. And uh, we didn't know that this much time later we'd still be waiting to reopen the town hall for public use, but uh, we're getting closer. And uh, once we can do so safely, I know uh, we'll get the blessings from the select board. That's all we got. All right, well, thank you. And thanks for helping on the computer crises. You're welcome. You know where to find me if you need me. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Upstairs. Good night. We'll find you upstairs. Right? Okay. <laughs> play, play the piano. <laughs> yeah. Is it here? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? All right. The warrants are circulating. Your signature for the work. And first up is considering the approval of a letter um, to VCDP for the ECC grant award extension. And I am recusing myself. So everybody else, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I have the letter. Um, so the purpose of this extension is consistent with the initial award. Um, if certain pieces of the project are not complete, then we must uh, request a six month extension by October 1. Um, and it is necessary that we, that we do so. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. This is the, this is just to say out loud, um, this is the Vermont Community Development Program grant for ECCT for the work on the ECCT or the East Cal store. Any questions, John? Okay. Um, is there a motion to uh, request a six month extension to the BCDP grant award? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Steamy. Okay. Thank you. I will circulate. I will sign and pass this along for you guys to sign. Okay. Next up is the East Callis easement. Do you want me to talk? Sure. Okay. So a little over a month ago, the select board was approached uh, about granting easements to benefit three parcels of property in East Callis. Um, Lisa Wilson and Arlene Holland are in the process of selling a piece of property uh, in East Callis. The buyer's attorney, for the, uh, the buyer's attorney identified that there were there's no documented or deeded easements uh, corresponding with the driveway serving these properties. The driveway comes off of Moscow Woods Road, splits here to benefit these two parcels, and then there's another split down here to benefit the third parcel. So the lack of a documented deeded easement potentially creates a title issue for these folks. And they, of course, had difficulty trying to sell this property, approach the town about uh, granting an easement, or easements, multiple easements for each of the benefited properties um, so that effectively there is documented title that goes along with the driveways for these parcels, or for these parcels. That, of course, runs over a piece of town property that uh, we believe has been in the ownership of the town since about 1830. So, um, the I was here a month ago. Uh, you voted to, in concept, move this process forward. 
the way that you did so was to post notice of a proposed conveyance of these easements uh, in the Times Argus and in a certain number of places around the town. I think it was at least two. Excellent. Perfect. Um, that posting requirement by statute allows the voters an opportunity to present a petition to the select board by the town clerk objecting to the proposed conveyance. Um, it is now 31 days since that posting was approved by you and first made, and there has been no petition submitted. So the next step in this tonight would first be to um, select um, from among you one person who will be authorized to sign the deed on behalf of the town. And also we're going to sign a resolution and certificate that essentially says we gave the public the notice that we were required to give by law. The easement deed that you will be granting, as I say, conveys an easement for ingress and egress over the existing driveways. It is limited to the present extent of and in the present locations of the grantee's existing driveways. So where they're located and to the extent. And they are not exclusive so that other folks can use and travel over these as needed. Um, and it goes, and it would be, if somebody else sold their house, it would be... It runs with the land. Runs with the land. Exactly. Right. It's a burden to each one of these parcels. Uh, the easement uh, provides that the grantees, the parcel owners, are solely responsible for maintaining their driveways. So the town doesn't, isn't going to be taking on that obligation. And it also reserves the right to the town to change the location of the easements in the event that the town would need to at the town's expense, provided such change does not frustrate the purpose of the easements or significantly lessen the value of the easements. So it gives the town some flexibility in the future if there's some need to move the driveways to a different location for some new purpose, for some purpose or use of the property, mm -hmm. the town can do so at the town's expense so long as access to the parcel is maintained. So that is- And I assume the there's a process that we would have to follow, the town would have to follow if that were to happen. We would give them notice that that was in fact what we intended yeah. to do, okay. invite them to a discussion about what, was, what we anticipated, engage them in a dialogue yeah. and go forward on that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there is also going along with this a mm -hmm. survey mylar uh, for the, Town, but well, it's, it, the survey was created for this parcel. It also shows the town's property out here. Mm -hmm. So we've asked that a mylar be created and it will be recorded with the easement. So there will be a better public record of what of, of the town's parcel and what's there. Who's creating that? Uh, the uh, Lisa's attorney, Gloria Rice, is coordinating getting that done. Okay. The survey already exists, it's just not in the report. Is that, that basically the Paul Harrington? That is the Paul Harrington. Yep, that's the one. Forgive me, but I don't know what a mylar is in this context. A mylar is a type of paper. It's yeah. just a recordable type of paper. It's not a transparency. It's I not a transparency. Okay. It's, it's, it's a opaque. Paper. It's it's a, just a different. <clears throat> it's a, a better translucent, translucent paper, paper that is more of a standard size. Yeah, law yeah. law says yeah. how right. how big it has yeah. to be. Okay. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. That's what you're, what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. So I would first ask that you choose. Okay, okay. can we get sort of if the board has any questions? Any questions? Any questions from the thank you. audience? No, thank you. Well, thank you. That's pretty okay. happy. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. And so what we'll do is once I get all of the secure all the signatures, mm -hmm. I'm going to deliver it to Lisa over here, who's going to bring it to Gloria Rice, her attorney. Gloria's going to take this and the property transfer tax return that she is. Um, working up, mm -hmm. as well as the Mylar, and deliver them to mm -hmm. the town office for recording. But of course, the town office isn't open right now, so yeah. we can't do that. Okay? Any, okay. So any questions? Questions? No. So, so do you need a resolution? From I have the resolution. Yeah. It's already pretty, and, and maybe, I mean, do we, we just have to designate somebody to sign Someone to sign the deed, and you yeah. will all sign the resolution. Yeah, okay. So okay. I move that we designate the charities we ought to sign. On yeah. behalf of the uh, town of Callis, the deed, and so the other relevant paperwork. I'll second that. Mr. Garden. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 So I'm just going to handwrite that in because that was a little bit of a.
Okay. Detail left open. Leaves Wheeler. It's a good solution. Um, okay, and then is there a certain amount of time within which the board has to get this done and over to the office? Well, the closing for the sale of Lisa's property is the 30th? I don't know. 30th? We're um, waiting to get this done. The buyers had to have another appraisal done, so the bank might need a couple days to get their paperwork together. But normally, normally <coughs> something like this might be recorded at the same time. Is That's what I was wondering, is if it's going to be done at the closing and recorded with all the other documents that get recorded. It, that would become not, not necessarily recorded. Because it has to be... You have to have this before you can close. So and you have the document. <laughs> but, yeah, but as a practical matter, they can all come in together, and this gets recorded first, so therefore it was there first. Okay. And the attorneys all have the evidence of it. Do you need one of us to move this resolution and second it? Yeah, why don't you do big uh, I move the resolution. And certification regarding commands of the municipal real estate. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. You got that, Katie? I'd love to hear it one more time. Mark McCallie moved the resolution and certification of. Can you say it again, Mark? Yeah. Uh, uh, resolution and certification regarding conveyance of municipal real estate as described in East Callis. We can't see her. Thank you. Yeah, and I seconded it, and it was unanimous. Okay, I'll step it up. Thank you. So Denise, you would sign or indicated right there for me, please. And I don't have a photocopy or anything. I need a PDF. I can do it. And you have a notarized ticket? Yes. And Denise, was this your free act indeed and the free act indeed of the town of Calais, Vermont? Yes. Thank you very much. All set. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another job well done. No, I have to. Oh, you're going to give this to me, you said. Yep. Never mind. Alfred, is that correct? 
It was correct as of Friday, and now I would say it's not what we intend to do. So if I can cut to the chase. First, thank the board for agreeing to the yeah. on the meeting. So it's different than what you said? I'd be glad to give you a quick chronology, yeah. but I just want to set the table. I want to be respectful of other people's time. I mean, we've got a half an hour of three items, and I don't want to you know, yeah. take anything away from others. So if I could just offer a quick recap of where we got a permit. Mm -hmm. Alfred is here to you know, bring us into uh, perspective from the town's point of view, from the commissioner's point of view. So originally what WEC proposed to do, and I have some images if people haven't seen it, but I can point to this helpful picture up here. So this is what we call pole six. So as you head towards east, towards the intersection, this would be the last structure that WEC owns that you see. And then it goes underground, under the road, crosses across from it, um, Alice and Evans House and Brigham's, and then surfaces behind the museum in a structure that looks quite like that. There's a pad mounted transformer that serves the two residences, Allison and, and Brigham. Um, there's a bad wire, and that was, the, that was the impetus to ask the town for the permit a month ago. So thank you again for that. That was plan A. Mm -hmm. um, our engineer met the road commissioner out there, and there was a uh, concern, there is a concern about the culvert. There's a five-foot culvert. Um, Alfred can describe it more specifically. I'd just like to kind of give you the full sequence and where we are tonight. So there was a proposal, and the design advisory board was brought in because WEC first proposed to put a new pole. Oops. You want me to go back? I, I, well, I don't know if the board cares, but I'll show you on the image. You know, the, the, the map's fine, the sketch is fine. That might be most useful. And I have copies and paper if anybody wants it. So this represents that pole six that you saw in the image a moment ago. Here's Allison's house. This pole that sets on her property is not ours, that's consolidated in Comcast. This red line represents the five foot culvert the town has between this set of, um, the off, coming off of Curtis Pond. The pad mounted transformer, and we have a bad wire somewhere in here, that's the whole purpose of our initiative is to replace bad wires and follow the existing right of way, which would be this line. When Alfred pointed out the culvert, what came up with Plan B, which is what the request a week ago and what is pending in front of you is about. Okay. And that would have us put a pole right here, which would stand taller than the image you saw before, because it has to have 18 foot of clearance across the roadway at the lowest point. And the pole that is, we call number six is actually, below, it's, it's, it's probably 15 foot under the road surface, below and to the, to the north. So this would need to be elevated where we need to do this here. The DAB um, took its proper responsibilities and there's no support for this because of the aesthetic impact. On the fly last Wednesday, there is no support? Well, there was some support, but I would say if you read the emails since there, um, there's basically a decision by the DAB to pull back because they presume that WEC is now going to presume, follow a different path. But I want to just, can I get to that in a sequence? Okay, sure. so, so on the fly last Wednesday night, the DAB proposed a third option called Plan C to put still another pole somewhere in tangent with this pole. And this is slightly out of scale. It's not really accurate. It would be you know, in somewhat in the same line of sight because we would have to line this pole with this pole and that pole. But our pole would be somewhere adjacent to that and then run underground across the road and then back along the right of way to the back side of the museum. And has right. Allison been consulted through this process? She sure has. She's on the Zoom tonight as well. Oh, okay. So, you know, and I don't claim to represent Allison or anyone, or the DAV for that matter, but right. then to, just getting to the moment, the matter I spoke of. So apparently, and we had not consulted with the road commissioner until today, but as of Friday, the, uh, one of the members of the DAV was saying that WEC is now reconsidering, which may be the case. It's not plan B anymore. That's not acceptable because of the aesthetics, because the DAB has said so. All right. Now, just to go back to process a little bit, when did, I didn't see a notice that the DAB was meeting and have a site visit or see any kind of a decision from them? 
I can't represent what they decided. I can only represent that I saw email traffic that, you know, resulted, concluded that the DAV was not going to take an active position at this point because WEC apparently, they felt, was not going to follow Plan B. I, I'm sorry, Bill, I lost you. Plan, so Plan B was what you, orig what, what WEC originally proposed. No, after, the, after the first, after the first. A is follow the existing road. Okay. Uh, right That's, what That's what we approved. That's what we approved. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Who's, Thank you. Whose plan was Plan B? WEC's. No. Yeah. Working Alfred's without plan. So then, so then the DAV heard, let's just keep it generic, that Alfred's plan wasn't going to go either, and so then, and they, which they didn't like, and so they didn't engage, haven't engaged on Plan C? They actually yes. proposed it. That they proposed, plan, they C. proposed plan C, going back to Denise's question. Through what mechanism? Well, on the fly, on Wednesday night last, on the fly, Wednesday night with night. Allison present okay. and all four members of the DAB. And um, so, on an, an email? Or an, an, no, in person. Say, say that it's, okay. And Toby was there as well. I've got a question, Bill. That, with uh, the, now along that, there's a row of trees and there's a wetland. I wonder if they were without for we were looking at that. Is that going to be an issue getting at all, you know, with those, uh, you know, getting those above ground cables up to that final I, pole? I, that I pole? would say for plan A, no, because it's already been approved and ANR has an allowance 10 foot over the existing beauty right of way. And we're not in that. You know, we don't get to see that. Plan B, same thing. Plan C, unknown. And the, reason, that, the, and the reason I say unknown is because what we've done with Neil Maker is we now looked at the amount of cutting that would need to be done to move, open the line up yeah. to hit that new point. Yeah. And that's the most expensive and, and sensitive area of any of this option. And it's not something WEC would like to propose. So, so Bill, um, not to intentionally try to be a stick in the mud, but it seems to be in my DNA, well, at least on this board. Um, th there's an issue that's not a, directly a WEC issue or a road commissioner issue. The issue for me, and I'm guessing the rest of this board, mm -hmm. is that um, if the DAB actually has jurisdiction over the siting of that pole, which I have no reason to doubt, then they, and they wanted to provide uh, official input, they're a body of this town, they're a commission of this town, um, appointed by the select board. They need to warn a meeting, they need to make it available to the public because there may be other interested public. Um, and it's my understanding, I've not seen a warning. Uh, the select board wasn't notified, not that they have to notify us, but there should have at least been a posted warning Notice. of that on-site meeting. We've had an issue of this we had the same issue last year, and it's the same time of year. It seems like the leaves fall, so this public process. Um, so I, I would just say that any decision of the DAB is not a legitimate or legal decision. Not that we wouldn't agree with it in the end, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, a flawed decision from a procedural from a uh, non-legal perspective. But it's from a legal perspective, it's illegitimate. Um, well, so the process wasn't followed. Well, right, so, so it's an illegitimate decision. So, um, well, it's, it's, it's not valid from a procedural standpoint. Right. right. So, so I'm going to skip to the end and ask, absent that process, is there anything that we should really be continuing to talk about right now, or should we remand this back to Bill and Alfred and the DR, the DAV, um, to come back with what we, what we, what Alfred knows, and you may as well know, is that we've been working really hard to get, in the interest of time here, respecting public process, um, to get things fully packaged with all of the right input, all the right procedures followed before they come here. So. Hearing that that may not, well, sounds like, I'm not going to say may, hearing that that appears to not have happened here, is there anything, there's nothing for us to approve tonight, right? Well, the, the 
Right, because if the DAV didn't follow the process of then we can't approve noticing, noticing a site visit and meeting, Whoa. we haven't even seen any kind of a final decision issued by the DAV. Right. And I would want somebody from the DAV here, and if they're not here, then I would want to see their decision consistent with what you're presenting. I would actually also want to see why the B was less appropriate. Yeah, we're yeah. I mean, going overhead across the road. I mean, it's a comparable distance, maybe even shorter. It so, crosses a road with overhead, but there <laughs> seems like there's some. He's an engineer. Well, I'm just. <laughs> well, I went up and looked at the site, you know, myself, just for some clarity too. And I just, I, I'm not sure what. I don't deal with the, the, the you know, with the DAD very often, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd like to know what. So, so, the, what they're, so can we either delegate Rick as our point person or Rick just say, why don't you go to the DAB site visit or their meeting to well, I think that'll answer your questions. Right, and I think our minutes will reflect that the process needs to be redone right. and they need to follow the correct process. I don't think there's anybody on the board that would disagree with the fact that the process wasn't followed by the right. sounds of things. And all I'm saying is, in addition, Rick, can you just find a way to get, I'm not going to ever have those kinds of questions, so can you, is it reasonable to say, could you participate in that process in some way that you have those kinds of engineering and that, you know, that deeper insight that you have addressed as part of a, a process before it comes here? These are more review board kind of, they're, right. they're, their aesthetic decisions, I guess, I'm guessing, right? I mean, because basically it went on both sides of the road. It, the conditions would be similar. I mean, I hear you crossing the road with the, with the, the above ground versus running parallel. I, I guess it also turns on whether where the district Kent's Corners historic district boundary yeah. is. My guess is wherever those above ground poles currently are, okay. that's outside of the district. No, it's not. It's not. Sorry. Can I speak to that? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good. So, the answer direct question. Uh, the boundary on the west side is where our three phase transmission line feeds the substation, if you know mm -hmm. that, where the, okay. where the level starts rising, mm -hmm. lines cross, essentially that. I know where it's line. Yeah. That's the proper line. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, back to what I'm, what I'm asking on behalf of WEC, besides your patience here, because it is kind of convoluted and I don't want to get in the way of the DAV process mm -hmm. or any site visit. But what I'm here to do for WEC is to, to ask to rescind the request for the revision. As long as, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, as long as we can work something out with Alfie on plan A. And I can speak to what we've talked about. I don't want to force the issue. Mm -hmm. The uh -huh. DAV wants to get involved, but I don't want to, to pursue wrong. plan B. No, it's promising. Or C. You want to pursue A again. Okay, so the B cool. reason is the aesthetics by the DAV. Mm -hmm. the, B, the C reason is because the wetland impact on the north side of the road right. is relatively much more significant than on using the existing pathway. Oh, okay. that's, our, that's our preferred route. And I have a hypothetical just to kind of tee this up. John was here, maybe not. So back in 03, when I brought to the board then the issue of the Curse Pond Dam, I'm going to draw dots and try to connect them here. So, if this thing fails tomorrow, that five feet, foot culvert, what are we going to do? Because mm -hmm. members are going to be affected, affected immediately. Members meaning what? Wet members. members. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. up and down this road, this neck of the woods. Anybody that's power will be severed. It's it's crossing all the members. members for them to be able to no, no, power now, users. Now we can backfeed yeah. members from different directions, but it takes time. Mm -hmm. And what I, the reason I'm reading this up is not to throw any kind of rents in the works because this is you know, absolutely something that we need to think about. When can we reasonably modify, you know, Alfred's issue with going this route, we do, doing this route is going under the culvert. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a five foot culvert. To do this right, we'd have to get it out, pack down everything and put it in. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Now we're proposing, this is the change, is to go over the top. The three foot depth of bearing. Mm -hmm. And it's in the right of way. So we got a permit for that. It's the specifics of how we set up the prospective conduit so that it makes it easy to react if the culvert fails or in a if there's time when the budget allows to replace mm -hmm. it in a normal course of construction. So I'm not the construction guy, Alfred is, but right. you know, just I would like to go back to plan A 
and we would not like to pursue Plan B or, frankly, Plan C. Okay. So, so would you then be keeping the permit that we originally issued? Exactly. Well, you know, and you when was that? That was. I was going to ask that question. When did we issue that permit? That was. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I might have been idea, but I wasn't here. There were two Probably. members of the board that were mentioned this ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was on. I don't think it was on August twenty third. I don't think we need to do anything. I don't either. The well, permit that you have stands. Right. If you want to come back to us with an alteration to it, it has to go through a properly worn process that Right, which is the DAB. Well, no, if it needs the DAB from you. That's only one option, though. There's there's three or uh, four options on the table. Yeah. No, no, actually, not, not on this table. No, no. Well, We're back to option one, A. I guess right. my So let me ask option you. A doesn't... doesn't Satisfy my concern. Yeah, and you guys don't even haven't even heard my concern yet. Okay. Right. And Toby, Rick, and myself met there today, and we have another idea. Don't know if it's possible. Don't know if it, if Wick can do it. But I'm trying to protect the town from later on if we have to change that culvert. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And okay. also the members that are going to be out of power for who knows how long. So the idea that struck us today is can we do a quick connect, disconnect, on the north side of the culvert? So you come across, like you are right here, come across right here, disconnect box right there. Then in five, ten years, we have to change that culvert. You disconnect here, pull this back through feed it to power everybody up while the culvert's being done. We replace our culvert, you come back in and, and make your, disc, your connect back. I don't know if that's possible, but I need, I need something to be able to change that culvert down the road without having to pull 300 feet of water. Can that culvert be moved to, to the west? No, no say it won't allow you to move the culvert. It's a stream, it's an annual Oh, it's actual stream you're moving. It's, yeah, yeah that's 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 I'm confused. Could someone help me out? Is the DAB, is this within their jurisdiction? I don't know if, is, I don't know if plan any, A is within their jurisdiction. Any, any poll or all of the, the lines? It's that really are, muddy. They, they talk about, it's mostly about buildings with the exception of substantial or significant changes to outdoor landscaping. Right. Okay. Is, so is I expect the poll is significant. Something buried under the road, I don't think is. I mean, no. we could argue about that. I don't well, see why they care. I guess what I'm care. trying to figure out is, is this in front of us now, right, properly, or not? No, no. I guess it depends. It's, in other words, we're about to have, these guys have a lot to talk to each other about, the DAB, it's, I'm hearing all of this. And we is this hear. something we need to hash out? Because I, I can see going two routes. If this is before us properly now, then we should continue it because we don't have time. These guys haven't They're even worked sure it out. Well, well, you know, and, and, or it's not before us. And, and there may case. be some interpret, interpretation that the DAB might, there may be yeah. language that needs to be interpreted. DAB may interpret it differently than us. There may yeah. be precedent that we're not aware of or the DAB is not aware of. So I can't answer your question. So, so if we're going, if they're not asking us to do any revision, and they're sticking with the original permit that we issued, then we, don't nothing, about we don't have anything to do. If they're interested in Alfred's, or we're interested in Alfred's option, well, they can explore it then that can be explored, and okay. you would have to come back to us with a, a different permit amendment. Yep. And if it's underground, it sounds like it wouldn't be an issue with the DAB. But if it's it above ground and the, and the DAB asserts jurisdiction, it has to have a warrant here, meeting. Right. right. And tell us, bring somebody from the DAB here and tell us what they think. And, okay. and, and with both of Denise's branches and Mark's additions, there's still nothing left for us to talk about right now. No, I don't well, the so. only thing I would add, I would, I mean, to see if Alfred's the idea is a good idea. If there's, do you think, Bill, with your experience, is that possible to put some kind of a quick design? I asked my colleagues ground? today, and not the fight. The people at Belco. Belco is behind this mm -hmm. project because this is the fiber project to the town hall. Mm -hmm. right? This is part and parcel. We're repairing a bad line mm -hmm. and we're putting an extra pipe for a cable. Fiber. Right? For fiber. So yeah. this cable doesn't happen until this happens. Mm -hmm. 
And we're really, you know, under the gun. We want to hit the, the construction schedule. Well, so I think the one, the one thing to add to, or to, you know, revise what the points you were making, Denise, Alfred. I'm hearing you say, am I, did I, am I remembering, or did I hear you correctly, that you're not okay with Plan A? The one That's that, what he said. Correct. Yeah. He's okay after, with the modification. So after, there. after the select board approved. Right, right, right. The right permit. Right. Wick got a hold of me, and we made we had a site visit. Right. So during that site visit, I caught something that I ordinarily wouldn't have. Right. And the fact is that the culvert is in the way of this pipe. Mm -hmm. So you put right. three phase wire through there. It's going to have to be dealt with at the point when we change that call. So I think the question that, that that then does put a question in front of us because on August twenty third, when I was not here, the board. Which is neither here nor there, but I'm just repeating back what you guys did. So on August 23rd, the board approved a permit mm -hmm. that WEC has full authority under that permit to move forward. Right. We're hearing our road commissioner now say, no, please don't. So he has asked that we rescind the decision. That's yeah. the that's Which would bring us back. Well, let's be. We didn't right, approve. Right, there was right, no. Right. There was nothing to. We there's nothing to approve. Rescind. Understood. I just want to make a formal. Right. Decision. So you want to yeah. like to work with the road commissioner and. Right. And others, right. Yeah, so, so if, if they, so they have full authority to go, notwithstanding office objections, right? That's yeah. right. They, they have full got authority to go through with A, right? Because we already gave them the permit. So, That's right. but, right, a town within forty-five days, there's. Am I mixing things up? But something under permits, so there's a period where people can object or appeal or something. I think it depends. I think it depends on the type of permit. That type could be of permit. It might be twenty. It might be thirty. Well, so that so that is a, a, a question, right? I mean, we should if we want to encourage or you know do within the authority that we have under an already issued permit to say, what well, please go back and revisit the site with our road commissioner so that everybody's happy. We probably should take some kind of take some kind of statement tonight. Well, it sounds like what I'm what I'm hearing is. That WEC is willing to work with the road commissioner and investigate this other option. Correct. And then, would you be ready to report back to us on uh, October 11th, Soon or before? Yes. So that we can get this on the agenda. So, in, in any event, it sounds like there will be modifications to the original plan A. So, therefore, WEC is voluntarily not moving forward with the terms of the permit, which right. they're permitted to do on the in the permit A or plan A. Um, and so, in effect, we should be rescinding that. We should be Well, it's a question of how far we you want to be. In other words, we could just rescind the permit. Or right. we could simply let the minutes reflect that WEC has indicated that it will not move right. forward with that right. permit. Or that, yeah. right. And that and, and there will be consultations with the road commissioner and that we'll get a joint report back on but we'll be modifying the permit anyway. And, but and it doesn't matter. We'll take appropriate action at right. that time. Yeah. I would want the words good faith, that in, yeah. you know, in good faith, based on Bill's representation, we are not taking action. They're not. Good faith lines. We are there not was one thing that was said in there, too, that I want to catch. And I know that I know that you guys are under time pressure on this. It's late in the year. So is it the is this the kind of thing we could go in with? You know, lay the lay the cable as as lay, as proposed, with the understanding that you come back and put you know put in if that's going to delay it further to put in some kind of a disconnect. A disconnect. Okay. On you this know that would be you know that would be on the back of the permit the application. Um, the word board, as used herein, is to mean the board of selectmen. Um, what does it say? The board hereby reserves the right to order and change the location, change to order the change of location or the removal of any structure. All the above conditions shall be applicable. So we, it sounds like we could. We could, but we're not prepared. I, right. I think. I think. We, I think. We, what what I'm hearing and what I right within the terms of it. Right. What What I'm hearing and I think Sounds if everybody agrees that we want to cooperate, WEC needs to get the work done. Alfred has a new idea. Yeah. Let's go back to the drawing board. Come back with a new proposal. 
it might not need to go to the DAB if it's the one, right. the original so permit the or, the, 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 or, the revi or the revision that you're talking about most likely would not need DAB approval. So why don't we put that in the minutes and that Bill is going to work with Alfred or somebody from WEC is right. going to work with Alfred. Okay. And if Rick's available, he'll go on site at the time that you guys go out there and talk about it and then be prepared to get a something if you need it on the 11th. I, yeah, I need We should have some kind of report because we're leaving a very open question here. So this is to work in good faith with the town. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I think okay. the permit stands where it stands. Yeah, and right. If we, have to, if we come up with terms that modifies that permit, then, then we, we can bring that. that, Bill and I bring that exactly. to you. Exactly. Right. And you, you right. modify the permit at that point. Right, right, right. exactly. Which well, hopefully we can do that next meeting. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the good faith part is that WEC will not proceed based on the current permit that we are not taking action to rescind. Right. And the other thing that, that we've said it but wasn't in the list of things that Denise mentioned is if the D if there's a a discovery that the DAB does need to be involved, that that meeting should be duly warned and site visit. Right. right. Which is not up to Bill or Alfred, but it's right. up to right. just to have it's it. It's up to them to follow the process. So right. It's not you'll, up to you. You'll but keep DAB in a little bit. Well, just to set the record straight, you know, I reached out to John McCullough initially simply to have a conversation to make sure he was aware of what we were doing, yeah. knowing the precedent that John cited to earlier, and mm -hmm. wanting to you know, make sure that everybody knew what we were doing and meeting mm -hmm. with member Al Allison Evans as well. Yeah. And so, Alfie's been very favorably disposed to working with Lex, so it's, really, yeah. it's a big deal. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so I have a member of the Zoom group, James Dugan, that would like to speak. Is the board all done? I think Thank we'll you. Let somebody else Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Um, Mr. Dugan, did you have something to say on this? I did, yes. Thank you for acknowledging me and allowing me to participate remotely. Uh, my name is James Duggan. I'm the Director of Preservation for Vermont State Historic Sites. And I'm here for two purposes this evening. One, to gather some information for uh, our organization as we have not been notified by anyone. We have not been notified by WEC or anyone associated with the town nor Velco about this project. Our first uh, awareness of it were the flags in the ground recently and then um, found out about your agenda this evening. I guess just to, um, you know, it sounds like multiple plans have already been looked at, but again, as the owners of the property uh, on both sides of Old West Church Road, uh, not being involved in that has been is a little frustrating. Uh, so I'd just like to notify everyone that we're interested parties and we would like to uh, be part of some of this consultation. Uh, and also, um, you know, just on your theme of correct procedures, a project of this type would warrant uh, review by our archaeology team uh, for project review on a number of different levels. So uh, again, just um, making uh, stating that as an awareness as we move forward, uh, anything involving our property, it's a state historic site. And so e excavation, it's considered archaeologically sensitive and would need plan review. And we haven't seen anything on this project submitted yet. So, so, you, so you mean that Say you're from the State Historic Preservation, is that what you said? That's correct, yep. I'm with the Division for Historic Preservation, and uh, I manage the buildings and grounds for the State Historic Sites, of which the and King Tavern is one. Well. Because Kent Museum is owned by the state? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. But is the property implicated here on yes. both sides of the road, owned by the state? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. So, for example, one of our historic site markers is uh, located across from the museum in proximity to where some of these lines are. So, uh, you know, we have no, um, I don't believe we have on file any as-built plans from previous projects. And so that's one of the things is I'm trying to determine the location of these lines in relation to some of our assets. So what do we need to do to, or what does WEC, I guess, need to do? to comply with your requirements? Uh, well, the first thing would be to initiate consultation with us and provide us with some information. Uh, I didn't want to interject earlier and disrupt your local proceedings because this is sort of, it's related, but but not, I don't think, directly impacted. But 
I, I think my main message is that we should have been part of the consultation previously and as owners of the property are, are interested in what happens here on a number of levels. And I just wanted that to be noted. Um, yeah, you know, exactly. I'm happy to work with WEC and with the design advisory board because I do believe they have jurisdiction in this area. Um, uh, certainly for the, the view shed elements, but we would have jurisdiction for any of the ground disturbance. So um, we'd like to be have the opportunity to review the plan prior to construction proceeding. And I'm happy to work with whomever uh, would be responsible for so, the different parties on that. Is there an app? Is there some kind of an application that they need that WAC needs uh, to submit? Th there is, and I can deal with that offline here. And um, so it sounds like they need WAC needs to go back to the drawing board with regards to your process. Well, hang on though. Can, I want to. I want to. With the, the with, yeah, but, so yeah, with no with no disrespect at all. I just I am not clear. And I'm I'm ignorant on how the fact that um, that you're that the, that you're an owner is it is you're an owner with easements and conservation and other other things overlaid on top of the ownership because I mean we don't what is the normal what is the normal notice process for owners. Well, maybe, I mean, I think that the notice process would go back to WEC right. Right, notifying, right. And notifying so, property owners such as Allison Evans and Judy Bigham right. and to notify the State Historic Preservation. As an owner. Right. An owner. And so, so, so if it's no more, if it's no more uh, complicated than that, and they weren't notified, then that's that's just a ball drop. But what I'm and those mistakes happened. I, I you know I'm not making I'm not you know really pointing fingers. But is it more than that? Is what I'm really trying to understand. Is there some overlay that is beyond the fact that perhaps a notice wasn't provided? Well, and that's why I asked if there was some kind of permit application request form that WIC needs to the WEC. Needs right. To file. Right. But under what authority? My question is, where does that come from? If yeah. there is, where? What is? It's pr if there is an application, it probably says on it. But on. Um, but on. Uh, no. But just because you own it doesn't mean that you're entitled to extra special rights. And I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what triggers a, a different expectation that other property owners might have. I could answer that question, I believe, a little bit. Uh, projects that require a state permit, um, so any telecommunications or electrical projects under the Department of Public Service would require that, um, is are subject to uh, 22 VSA Chapter 14, which uh, this is the Vermont State Historic Preservation Act. And that is triggered by the amount of ground disturbance proposed uh, potentially in, in this project. Uh, and uh, so whether it's WEC or ultimately, you know, sourced back up to, from what I just heard, potentially Vel a Velco project, um, there is a process and um, these we've dealt with these partners before in working through that process. I'm suggesting that the ground disturbance component, because it is a state historic site and therefore considered potentially sensitive for archeology, span would trigger that process under 22 VSA chapter 14. Okay. So, so, so I, I guess for clarification purposes, Mr. Duggan, um, are you saying that this is jurisdictional in terms, this triggers the PUC jurisdiction or, or review of the project and an elaborate PUC process or some kind of minor PUC process? Or are you saying that there's yet another process provided under statute where if a state historic site or property is to be worked on that they have their, there's another process provided in statute outside of the Public Utility Commission process? So I cannot speak definitively because again, I have no information or specifics about this project to speak to the context or any of the um, parts of the scope that may trigger it. 
the process that I'm talking about is consistent um, in the state regulatory process. I don't know if any of these um, fall into that for jurisdiction, but uh, I'm, I guess I'm speaking first and foremost, just uh, again, as the owner, some in courtesy and understanding what is being proposed on our property. So it sounds... Um, so, it, but I just so, so, want to... So that's, that's what I wanted to distinguish. We have no problem with the courtesy thing. That's what we like to do. We notify all the neighbors. We ask WEC to do that, and, and they generally do that. There might have been an error here. That's one thing, but if, if formal jurisdiction or, uh, you know, input um, or approval by you folks, historic preservation is required as part of some uh, public utility commission process. And this is gonna require either, either a major or minor application to be processed through the public utility commission. That's much more elaborate and much more time consuming. I'm hoping it's, it's not that. Um, you know, of course, we, it, you know, WEC will work with you and will work with you. We, we love that property. And, um, sure. Us as well. I would hope that's not the case. I, and again, I can't speak definitively on that perspective on whether there's jurisdiction under a project review uh, focus, but um, we do regularly re re review these types of projects. Uh, and uh, so I'm assuming that hopefully someone at WEC has research this and made the, that decision or not, I would suggest if it hasn't been done that that analysis is completed. Um, it's their so responsibility that, as the, as the, you know, the developer of this project to, it's, it's not necessarily our, our, our um, okay, so, so, responsibility to, you know, look out for that, for example, but when it's brought to us, we do review those and uh, I'm just not certain of the status of this particular project because we, we, we don't have any information. And so what I'm what I'm hearing then is WEC needs to go back and Bill, there must be somebody in, I don't know who it's you or somebody else in your office, needs to provide a courtesy call and copies of information to the State Historic Preservation Office and see if they have any issues and work with them. And then based on what that what you find out from that, then you would come back to the town with your proposal because they may not, there's no point in going forward with Alfred's idea and putting the work in to look at that if you haven't satisfied the historic preservation um, offices need to be involved in the process. Well, it that, sounds like the, the work that Alfred's concerned about is not on a property of historic preservation. I think it's Janet's, but um, Janet and so, but, <laughs> but the work around corner area is right historic preservation so, so uh, there's yeah. Yeah. But i think out of respect for the state and their role um we should give WEC. you know WEC will i'm sure bill will take the message back to WEC. well i'll follow up with mr dude tomorrow yeah right? that's all we need yeah that's all just, we need I mean, John, we're, it's uh, not janet's anymore right there's been a all right the new owners no janet's yeah. property i'm sorry I mean, we're a permit agency he says they may be the permit agency. Depending on what that's issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is so as far as you know, we're we're on hold until you work it out with the state. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So so given that, should we go should we be resetting the permit? I don't think we I don't think we review for that. No, I don't think so. I think that WEC will do what they need to do. I mean, and if they have an issue, if WEC has an issue then they can ask us to, the state can say, sorry. I, I just, these are independent permits. Right. Well, right, they are. I mean, in other words, we granted a permit, unless there's something the state says right. that says, right. we can't grant the permit until right. exactly. this is done. The state historic mm -hmm. grants a permit, which I don't think there is. We can grant the permit, and then the state has to decide if they're going to grant it. Right, well, and that's what I was getting to earlier, is, is there, what is the process? Well, I think at this point we're done. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything more for us to do, but it sounds like WEC and the state need to work together. Right. And then, um, you know, thank you. The state can come back to us if there's an issue. They, but 
You know, they can they can probably override our permit if they had to. They can. No, they can't. Like they can. It's yeah. independent. We right. give a permit. Right. There's sometimes projects uh, have ten permits. Right. right. It's right. not like everybody right. says after you, Alphonse, after you get us done. Right. Unless uh -huh. it's written into law. Right. I guess I'm thinking of Act 250, yeah. where right. certain permits yeah. are required before, before you, you can get an Act 250 permit. Yeah. But the right. state doesn't override a local permit. Right. Either. Right. That's right. Okay, so I think we're done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thank Bill. you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, thank you. Soccer. What's thank you, Jim. Jim thank Dunn. you very much for your time. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yeah, sure. Thank, thank you. Sure. Thank Thanks you. for following up to QSN. Yeah. All right. Um, municipal mitigation. Municipal mitigation. Grants and aid. Toby, are you here to talk about that? No, I'm no, just to watch you sign it. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is, I was kept looking at this, I mean, which project is this? But it's not a project, it's just the municipal roads general permit in general. Yeah, so it's a, it's a grant for specific sections of, of roadside that are impacted to the watershed. So essentially if we're ditching somewhere where we would ditch normally, and it falls into their category of where they would like to see the work done, they right. actually give us money. And the grant this year is up to $22,000. Yes, that's what it says on it. So we, we've identified four different projects, two of which we've already done, and a couple more. And there'll be more than that. So essentially it's just free money for the work that we normally do. Right, and this is just something that we sign annually so that we can get this money. It's, it's an annual, it started two years ago, and we've been in the program all, both years. Yeah. And this is also the one that we pay a permit fee for? No. Nope. No. What's the, one, what's the one we pay a permit fee for? That's just the town, the whole town pays a permit fee for the uh, municipal uh, grant. Like plan cleanup. Yeah, I thought it was the municipal, I thought it was the municipal roads general permit. General yeah, permit. that's the okay. one. General. Okay. This has nothing this to do with it. Okay, this is just, okay. Every town, every town in Vermont pays the MRGP. Right. Okay. So this is a motion that we make our annual re-up of, of the municipal mitigation grants in aid for the ensuing fiscal year. Is that a motion? Yes. I'm testing whether that's the right motion. I don't know. Essentially, that's a contract, so it's just to sign the contract. It's just an authorization to sign this yeah. standard grant right. agreement. Um, let me right. see. We'll probably call it up. But we have to. We have to agree that we want to do it. Right. So well, you've already right. signed a letter that you wanted to be in the program, so you yeah, already did that. Right. And this is just the contract this paper. Is that, this is just the con. Yeah. yeah. Just All right. right. Then we've spent too much time on it. That's correct. Standard grant agreement. All right, so now we just circulate it and everybody signs it and we can move on to the next item. That's yeah, right. I, I think we should just have a motion okay. stating that we agree to the standard grant agreement. She just made that motion, I seconded it. Oh, you did? Okay. And then we decide we need a motion. So Good. There's a motion on the floor. Off we go. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Okay. Roadside mom, there it is. 
Um, and Charlotte Hannah sent us this email, and she has checked with um, Michael and Megan. Let's Hello. go back to Toby or back to me. Back to me so we can get it to the right place. Eric Sorens and Kathy Kashansky, Howard Norman and Jane Shore and Erica Heilman have made this request. And I don't know, are, are we still roadside mowing? Yes. Yes, okay. Discussion, comments? Can you scroll back up? Is this like a effective immediately? She doesn't say, well, stop, but I assume that that's what they We went there to mow it and they came out. They said, they please. Their hands, please stop. This so, happened. This happened a while back. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. And, and then we said, well, we'd like to hear from them. Right. And I said, you have to put something in writing to select first. Select board instructed me to talk to them and say that they need to address the select board appropriately. And that's what they're doing now. Right. And so this it says this covers the entire mobile, mowable area on the north side of Pfeiffer's Ride and Peck Hill plus the south side down to Plateau Road. So right. we would we would we would approve that for the sign anybody's signature or it's anybody with signatures on that document. Well there was if that is all that space. Right. I think that's a pretty I think that's about every, that's everybody. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not it's pretty much everybody on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Except for Plateau. I have a question. There's three houses on Plateau. And this isn't it, do you she doesn't is it because of invasive species, or is it just going to That was going to be one of my questions. Do they verify what their reasoning for not mowing is? They don't say. Because I was, they, when they stopped us from mowing, they said it was because of monarch butterflies. Oh, that could be. That, because they're, maybe that they're, you know, their habitat is on that road, and mm -hmm. that we needed to save those flowers or whatever they were. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. They actually have. I have seen them this year, and I had them in like ten. So. Yeah. No, I, I'm not That's against. Exciting. I'm not against butterflies. Not one bit. I, <laughs> I dare you to be against. <laughs> I dare you to be against butterflies. I also okay. have a job to do. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's reflect that Alfred likes butterflies. <laughs> Yes, marks. make sure that's in the minutes because it's 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 a true statement. However, um, there's more to it than that. The only thing I wonder about is, um, is there any reason to, it's an email from Charlotte, the rest of the crew doesn't seem to be copied, is there, I mean, Charlotte's not the kind of person who's going to make a representation that no. all these people are on board. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we mow, know. is it right, that the reason we mow is to provide view Right. Sheds. Right. And for sight distance. Sight Public safety. Right. So am I wrong? I don't want to say to anybody that, no, we're not going to mow unless two things happen. One, our public, they say why very explicitly and expressly. Mm -hmm. And number two, if it's appropriate in light of why, that they undertake, they indicate they will undertake the maintenance necessary. And number three, our public works director approves. Absent those three things, I will not vote. We don't have a public. We don't have a public works director. Road commissioner, road 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 commissioner road. whatever. I am. Well, but but Mark, we have we have we have we have honored honored we have honored similar requests. The only thing is, I think that we each time have heard exactly why. It's either invasive species or habitat. Right. Um, that's what's missing. I think the other thing we've talked about, and I, I, is some kind of signage that says, you know, we're not. No roadside mowing. No roadside mowing, line of sight limited, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know, like the, the Peter Harvey project. Right. He puts up the signs, um, you know, he does go out there and do some work himself. Well, he and, and I his, walked out too. You remember, well, we went and looked at the sight line right. areas, the intersections, right. and we approved it. We figured out what we needed to do to keep right. it safe. So I think we need to reflect in the minutes that we need to have these folks indicate why. Well, they also, yeah. And, you know. And yeah, John, go ahead. Well, and Mark touched on, there's another issue. And that is, and I brought this up before, I don't know if it's, I, I need to, this 
want to dig through the law books on a number in a number of areas. This is one. I, I, I know it was law in Vermont that landowners needed to maintain their road fronts. Mm -hmm. And mow, which means mow. And I, I know that I because I learned green. that. That's, that was the impetus for passing the bottle bill in Vermont. It wasn't because we were green and wonderful. The Republicans jumped on board, Bob Kinsey in particular, Representative Kinsey, because in mowing his road frontage, he'd get bottles back when they were real bottles and they'd go right through his tractor tire and cost him 500 bucks a pop. So he wanted bottle. The bottle bill passed for that reason back when a nickel cost people actually go pick them up. Um, if folks don't want it mowed, it's gonna have to get mowed at some point or it turns the trees right over tight to the edge of the road. Right. They don't want to mow it, then they have to agree at some point that they will mow it and knock down at very least the woody brush. So, I mean, we can't have our road crew just hopscotching all over town at the end of the season and mowing stuff when they, we're getting ready for other projects. So, you know, I, I think that needs to be part of the conversation and part of the, the agreement um, that they are going to agree then to get out their own lawnmowers and weed whackers and bush hogs and start mowing that do when we, so we, butterfly season's over. So we want to take we, the woody brush down. So we want them to come up with a plan for how they're going to be responsible for the upkeep. Yeah. Well, which it's is got to be approved by Alfred. Which, well, which is a step beyond we, you know, what we require some of the other landowners to do. So, what? What given the frequency that this is starting? Well, I'm to, suggesting this for everybody, including right. the other ones. So, so given, so I wonder if if we should be turning to Jim Barlow and asking him to come up with some kind of a form, mm -hmm. either a either a policy for the town or a contract that the town enters into with mm -hmm. these landowners. Well, well I was like, here move the document because people can't see. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a, a chat. Right. Either yeah. Remove, either remove it. I don't know take it, take the document. Stop the share. Stop the share. The share document. Let's take it off the screen. There you go. So either, yeah, so either a policy or, or a, I guess a policy, or some kind of a, some, something to formalize, because we've been doing this all very ad hoc, mm -hmm. and we, I think we're arriving at a place where we need to formalize the procedure and the expectation and exactly yeah. what um, is expected, um, both in the request and in the carrying out and honoring the, the spirit and the, and at, well, we've, it's been spirit to date, but the actual right. terms now of, of the town's agreeing to. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've never had any terms, just we will or we won't, right? right. Well, but Historically. We had, no, we've, we've had, had, we had a process. Yeah, we had, we've had, you know, Peter has Peter has a sense of you know there's a, there's there's here's what I'm going to do here's my process I'm going to manually you know sign or whatever I'm going to put up signs so there's been some rigor there yeah. there's been other examples we don't need to name names or we haven't had quite that level of rigor around some habitat requests that we've honored mm -hmm. um, and now you know. <coughs> I, I, yeah, it's it's time for us to put some consistency and for, uh, predictability, formality around these. But it sounds like we need something like when somebody has a curb cut request, some kind of a process, some kind of a, some kind of a form with language, and also, you know, the piece about you know you don't want it mowed, but then you have to agree to right. to mow it when the season is over for whatever item you're concerned about. So right. I think or we specify have, specify time. I right. think we have you know, two. I'm sure that the butterflies are on their way to warmer right. water by right. now. They right. know. So sure. they they well, well, whatever here. Whatever, 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 whatever the issue is. Right. Whatever the issue is. The reason yeah. for them not wanting to mow, it should be specified in that so-called permit. Right. As to timing. Mm -hmm. If it's butterflies, is it oct first of October? They're gone. Now we can go mow. Or, or like in the in the spring for wild turtle, that is also gone at a certain time, or well, it's not affected by mowing as, as much. That should be included in yeah. this. Well, and, and we what we can do by formalizing is say, okay, if we're going to not mow because of habitat, mm -hmm. then what is your plan, road folks, to manage the invasives? 
because mowing aggressively is the invasive's management strategy. So if we're not going to mow, then how are you going to manage invasives? You know, those two things don't right. come together well. I don't know if there's invasives in this portion. Not, it not that matter. it doesn't matter right now, but I think we do have to have some kind of a formal. Right, it just needs to be thorough. Mark and I will, will draft something. You will? <laughs> I've just been nominated, co-nominated. Yeah, no, no, I think it'll be a nice introduction for you on invasives. I think where I'd like to end up, if it's OK, is a very straightforward, simple process that Alfie administers initially, like curb cuts. In other words, someone wants an exception, they go to Alfie, Alfie mm -hmm. ch checks it off and proposes something to us. Right. Yeah. Like, that's like here it is with my conditions. Right. That's, that's like, like your process. Do. Right. Here's yeah. my conditions. And then up or down. We yeah. had his back there. Right? But we have but yeah. we have to we have to lay it that all out. This right. We have to have some kind of yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. But it has to be some kind of a process like that with approval by the board, a site that Alfred has visited. Mm -hmm. And I want to see does the board have any more comments? Because Toby wanted to make a don't, comment. I you do. Have one more thing. I mean, yeah. that, I mean, Alfred, I'd be interested in hearing what you say about this. And we would, you know, we would try to work with them if we can, if it's reasonable. You know, if it is, it's a certain time of. There's a certain window we can't mow. Mm -hmm. Fine. But if the town can accommodate moving the most schedule for that road, then that's fine. Otherwise, they would be. Well, otherwise, they would be their responsibility. We won't. You know, the subcommittee, your subcommittee takes that under advice. Right, right. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll float you a draft. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think we should make a, <coughs> make a decision because we have always, you know, these guys are asking, it's, it's the 1st of October. This is a very short window. You guys will be mowing one more time. I would like to, that, mow, that road hasn't been mowed at all, so I would like to mow it. Okay, so there, and they are specifically asking us not to mow it, right. which would be only one more time. So they're asking us not to mow it now. Right. Well, yeah. month ago. Yeah. Okay. well and, and moving forward. Well, right. So it so sounds like they want us to stop but, mowing. So, it so I think yeah, we could. Yeah, we need to have that man. Right. I think we could say we won't mow it again this this year. Right. Exactly. And then by next year, we'll have this new process. And for well, everybody. For everybody that yeah. wants well, to come back. Yeah, yeah but that row, that particular row, Should there's brush growing right in. Mm -hmm. So is this request for brush also, or is it just for it the says, flowers that the butterflies like? It says, it says roadside mowing. I would propose that we tell them that they have to come in, that we're going to do a process, but that at the moment we're not going to act until we, some one of them, come in and tell us why and how long. And that that's no damage to them because right now there's no mowing going on. Well, no, 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 no. So what I heard Alfred say is that they haven't mowed there all year, yeah. and so things are starting to come in that we don't right. want. Right. So, so I think. <laughs> and, but he can mow in three weeks or two no, weeks, right? No, no, they're asking not to. No, work. we're not going to do it. We don't give them what they want. We, but what I'm saying is not giving them what they want. If they really are worried about butterflies, well, nothing's going to happen for two weeks. Alfie can just wait a little while. Or what? Or we can say, we can say, the town will not mow. Granted, on the condition that the, the neighbors take Respons in, independent responsibility for managing brush and etc. I that's think I think happen. that's gonna that's that won't happen. happen. I was gonna say I don't think we should at this point put that out. I mean that should be part of the new process. But I think right now. It's either we agree or we don't. We, right. If we don't, if we don't agree, that unfortunately this will be the first time we haven't agreed. Right, and that's what I'm thinking. You know, if Duke one, you know, right. well, they're so asking that the road never be mowed. Never be mowed. Right. So, I as that. long as we reside there. I did not read this till just now. No, that is what they're asking. Right. right. No. And so this is this. I mean, we have never said no to a request like this. This is a never. But we've never said no to a you know. Please don't mow because of invasives. I want to do it my own way. Please don't mow because of of habitat. And well, so, well, to be clear, you know, I I'm part of that. Don't mow I, because I don't have invasives on my road, except in a couple spots. And so I manage them and I mow it. I mow it every year or twice a summer, 
And, you know, that was the quid pro quo. I thought that was what the responsible thing to do was, and I would have done it whether I was on this board. But they're not offering to keep the road in shape, and this is the problem I have with this. And, and I, I don't think we should make a decision on this till they come in here and have a chat with us. Yeah, agree with you. And I think out, the door is open. We, we may be mowing it this fall. We have to have a conversation with them. All right. So, so, I think, so then I think I need to understand. Okay. So then we need to ask. We need to put in the minutes that we're not approving the request at this time, mm -hmm. and that we are going to invite them to our next select board meeting to explain this to us. For 15 minutes. I mean, I want to see something in writing in advance so that we have a chance to digest it and we don't spend 45 minutes on this fairly, if they, you know, this is a fairly clear yeah. issue. And then the October 11th, if we have time on October 11th, I mean, the yeah. argument is a particular reason. For that's, a well, that's so the hard part. Is that would be specifically we want to hear from the reason for that. Right. And number two, what the plan is, especially if this is in perpetuity, what their plan is to keep the time, that clear the, and safe. The we timing just puts it right Does against that make the sense? And to put a finer point on this, there's the ground level mowing, right. which is the invasives issue and the butterfly issue. Mm -hmm. Then there's the trees. There's the brush. Right. So the, Alfred and his crew didn't mow in front of my house, and then they knocked on my door, my email, whatever, and said, we need to cut those trees back. And I that's, said, go for it. That's a different. And that's different. It's different than mowing. And it wasn't a, across the board, don't maintain the road. And I understand this to mean don't touch anything. Right. Um, no, we need to. It's we not need appropriate. Or do we want to go the other right. way and just say, fine, for two more weeks until the butterflies fly south. And then on October 15th, we are authorizing Alfred after that to. To mow. mow and clear as And then we don't have to spend 15, then we don't have to spend any. I think I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's, let's grant the request for valid, valid through October 15th or 30th. Right, but does that, is that the same for next year? Is no, 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 no. And then we can, so just, then we can put in, and then we can put in the minutes. And that it's give only them time to come back with right, and that'll issue. give us time to come well, up with. Well, we're going to come up with a policy. That'll give us time to come up with a new process. Make sense crazy. So that, that everybody is following the same process, everybody's treated equally, mm -hmm. and it's transparent. So I make the motion that we approve the re we approve the request with the but not as presented to us, which is forever and ever. We approve the request through October fifteenth, twenty twenty one. 2021 only, um, after which time the select board is considering, is asking Alfred to, to do mowing because it needs to happen. And part number one of the motion, part number two of the motion is that in 2022, everybody who's had this arrangement has to come back and make a new request under a framework that the select board will have developed and put in place by April 1, 2022. Right, a new a process. Okay. Okay. Pro process, not just, the, not just the framework of the process. Framework, Second. process, Second. all of that. Okay. Yep. All right. Toby, Toby wanted to speak. We yes. didn't vote on it. I know. Oh, okay. Toby. Toby's okay. very um, patient. So I think requiring people who ask not to have the town mow their roadsides need to be encumbered to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not, oh, well, after September 1st, you can come along anytime you want. Right. Scheduling mowing for your particular lawn mm -hmm. to right. town road crew is just unmanageable. Yeah. Right. 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 It yes. takes us a whole right. month, if we're lucky with weather and not breakdowns on the machine, to actually mow just one time around the entire town. Right. 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 And so essentially your, your process has got to be mm -hmm. and hold them to it and there may be a fine that if they don't get it done fine. and we report yeah. them to the select board, there should be some kind yeah. of penalty. Actually, to, to, there sh because if it doesn't get done, yeah. then it becomes a liability to the town yeah, no, in should, the next year. We should yeah. definitely yeah. have for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Katie, can you, could you get everything Toby said? Because that was really important. No, but we, maybe yeah. we just felt like we mowed. Well. Tell me we hear you. You guys can mow all you want. No, no. It's, it's becoming, it's becoming unwieldy. Yeah. And I totally hear your point. Right, yeah. The no, other thing true. to understand is that there may not be a line of sight issue in some places. 
but there may be hazards in the grass that they can't see. Yeah. Now, road design requires us to have a full traveled lane and a shoulder. Mm -hmm. And a shoulder needs to be a place where people can pull off in an emergency or to make other people pass. But if grass has grown up in a ditch, the people are going to see the grass and think it's a flat surface and they're going to have a hazard. So I think it's a safety issue that, mm -hmm. that we require those, those Things to be annually mowed. They have to be mowed. They okay. become a risk. Okay, I think I think everybody agrees with what you're saying, Toby. We've got a plan in place. There's a motion on the table. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And and is the can the board please formally authorize me and Mark to work on a and you'll come back to the and you'll come back to the board with it. You don't have to. You can just order us to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just want to invite them. Um, and you'll come back to us with a draft, right? Yep. You will. Yep. Okay. Um, so and I can mow after October. After October fifteenth, you okay. can. Katie mow. has a question. Katie. Who seconded the motion, please? Rick. There well, then, no, there's no, there's no motion. motion. There's no there's motion no that motion. needs oh, to be made. No, there is a pending motion. Wait. No, wait. The original motion that that. To approve it through the 15th? Yeah. I thought we, did we vote for it? Second. I seconded it. Okay. Thank and you. And then we didn't move it because we allowed Toby to speak. Right. Okay. And okay. then so we did. did we ever vote no, on we it? Voted. No, we did. Yeah, we, no, we, we voted on it. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. It was held until Toby right. got right. done. And then she said, all those in favor say aye. Oh, really? You yeah. didn't. I didn't because I was. Because you were, you were. Do you want to say aye now, Toby? Aye. Okay, so we really need to wrap things up because we are already yeah, 25 right. minutes behind schedule and we have local okay. hazard mitigation stuff to do. So with that, we will move on to local hazard mitigation. Grace, are you there? Oh, there she is. Hi, Grace. I'm here. Hi, Grace. Hello. And Nick's in the audience. <coughs> Nick. Oh, great. Um, um, so all that needs to be done for this, I believe, is for if you have the certificate of adoption in front of you, uh, you, need, you need to sign that in the town clerk. And then I believe you would probably just make a motion to sign the certificate and adopt. Um, I think I printed that off, Grace. Yes. Would you like a motion on the floor, Madam Chair? Yes. So moved. I'll second. Okay. So right. the motion is to approve the certificate of adoption. Okay. Um, this is month day twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay. I figured I'd just write that in there. Got it. All right. Um, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Is that all we need to do for this one, Grace? Okay. You need to carry it. Good. Yep, and then you'll send the signed adoption certificate to me. I'll put it into the plan, send it back to VEM, and then they'll formally approve the plan. Okay, and then the next thing that's up, that's it for that one, right? The next up is, all I can think of yes. is, the, is, the chicken, <laughs> is the chicken coop. <laughs> the chickens. Yeah. The chickens. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so... So I know that you don't have a ton of room on your agenda, so I just wanted to give like literally a five minute overview of Great. the continuity of operations. I short I shortened the PowerPoint I made to be really short. So um, if someone could give me permission to share my screen, I have a PowerPoint. If not, I can just go through it without. You know how to do that? To give Grace permission? Okay, cool. Thank you. You do you have it? Yes. Well, you thank you. Die. Okay. You just go back to the There we go. Can everybody see this? Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So I just wanted to go over what exactly is a continuity of operations plan, what's in the plan, and then next steps. This is going to be super abbreviated and we can just, you know, meet in the future as needed because I know you have a packed agenda tonight. So very briefly, uh, continuity, of, continuity of operations. This came up for a lot of towns and businesses at the beginning of COVID, trying to figure out you know, when something like COVID happens, what needs to get done day to day, no matter what's going on, what can wait, what isn't time sensitive, what is really essential. So basically a continuity of operations plan is a document that goes through and 
you do this process of thinking about what are those essential functions that the town on a day-to-day -day basis or a weekly or a monthly basis needs to get done. So that could be, you know, road maintenance if it's the winter, that could be paying town bills or, you know, collecting dues or anything like that. So, so that's what so that's what we kind of did by the seat of our pants. Exactly. So this is yes, so into... that's Right. So, you know, obviously the towns had to do continuity of operations, but they didn't necessarily document it. So a coop is really useful because, God forbid, if something ever similar to COVID happens, let's hope it doesn't, there will be some kind of document that will provide some kind of orientation for maybe new town staff or people who just don't quite remember what needs to get done. It'll all be written up. So that's what a coop is really good for. So basically the whole basis of the plan is what are those mission essential functions? And you can see the definition on this screen. So that's, you know, anything, if you didn't do it, it would affect safety, health, welfare of the public. So this screen has a lot of text. This was my attempt at summarizing and boiling down what's in a coop. You'll see in these columns under the section heading, these are the different sections of the coop. There's like nine of them. And then the column on the right shows what's in each section. And then there's a little picture of what a coop looops like on the right hand side. So I'll just go through these super briefly. Um, I will say that I already started kind of writing information in a template for Callis. Um, just like I did for Plainfield, and I can do it for, you know, any community that needs it. So I looked at your uh, local emergency management plan, I looked at your LHMP, I looked at the town plan and other stuff like that to try to figure out, you know, what some of those mission essential functions might be, what kind of hazards could hit the town, what are your town facilities, etc. So super briefly, like I said, the basis of a coop is what are the functions that must be performed? And then the rest of the plan talks about, you know, um, who does those functions, what facilities are needed to do those functions, you know, like a town office or um, something like that, or a garage for the road crew. And then what would happen if, you know, the facilities that you need were unavailable. Is there anywhere else in town you could go? Are there any neighboring communities that have facilities you could use? Stuff like that. And then it talks about what are your vital records and equipment. So that's really useful for, you know, if there's a flood or something in your coop, you'll have a list of everything you need to kind of get back up and get started and do those mission essential functions. Um, and then the rest of the plan. Are gonna, are gonna, go ahead. Grace, are you going to talk about, because I know when we had COVID, we came up with a plan and a way for anybody on staff to work remotely, except for the, obviously the road crew. So with that, that's probably going to be something you're going to try yeah. to have people have a remote action plan or something. Yeah, that would definitely be something that should go in here. So, you know, for example, in this activation section, like you can say in the event of, you know, community spread or an outbreak, town staff should transition to working remotely. And here's how that will happen. So you can have all of that information kind of written up so you can go to it when you need to do that process. So, yeah, so it talks about, you know, in whatever emergency the town could have to deal with. Um, what happens, who, you know, kind of activates the process that this plan writes out, um, who's notified, you know, select board chair, EMD, uh, road commissioner, stuff like that, um, delegations of authority. So just like in your LEMP where it says, you know, how much money can the town spend without select board approval or something like that, there's a similar thing in the COOP. And then it talks about, you know, reconstitution. So how do you determine if there's a flood? How do you determine that the town office is okay to go back into? Does anybody have to, you know, do an inspection to make sure the facility is, you know, okay to go back into and okay to work in? Stuff like that. So that's a super brief overview of what is in a coop. Like I said, I've started writing this stuff in. Um, 
And then next steps would be, I know your agendas are packed for the next couple of meetings, but um, I would suggest some kind of meeting. It doesn't need to be during a select board meeting, some kind of meeting with those with like the decision makers, you know, select board members, road commissioner, EMD, uh, town clerk, people like that who would be involved in dealing with these kinds of emergencies. Um, getting those people together in a virtual room um, just to like take, you know, an hour or less to go through what I just went through and kind of fill in the gaps um, of the information well, that I don't have. I think you can get a lot of information about what we did um, back when COVID hit and we were trying to decide what to do. We made, we did come up with very, you know, plans and things like that. So you could actually probably go back through our minutes. Yeah, that's see. a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Things that we, both, that. that we already did so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. You know, did right. it work or didn't or did it work, not work? Yep. Grace. I just have one suggestion or a question, first of all, is when this plan is done, what physical form is it going to take? So elect I would say electronic and paper would be the two forms I would suggest. What I would strongly suggest is that you create like red binders and that every member of the select board and the town clerk, et cetera, have them and take them home. Yeah. Um, I was in San Francisco when they lost the earthquake emergency plan. Uh, you know, it's just uh, it's so typical that when the real emergency happens, there's no electronic communication. I just say there's no electricity. And uh, nobody can find the damn thing. Right. So it would be good if uh, yeah. something something like that. Something in hard copy. Yeah, it well, happened under Irene A&R. Right. Didn't update their plans, and the new secretary, <clears throat> Michelle, didn't even know about them or know where they were, right. despite being urged to do that. Uh, and then, of course, they were in the building that got flooded, so without <laughs> access to Well, and not, yeah, not just the select board, it, right? Well, the, I mean, the clerk yeah. and the, I mean, all kinds board. should be all over the place. They should be all people over should the place. take them home. Some yeah. of them should be taken home. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. All right, thanks, yeah, Grace. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll touch base with you after, you know, I go back through the minutes and fill in the information okay. that I can. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for waiting. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Bye. Do we have to sign something? Did I no. miss that? No. She did. Yeah, yeah we're, all, we're all set with that. All right. Now I need to go. We need to unshare. Is she unshared, Katie? Yeah. Is Grace unshared? Okay, so next up. Oh, that's, okay, that's the one. Um, that you just had there. All right, there really isn't. Denise, I'm, wait, I'm just confused. Sign a certificate of adoption. Yeah, we already did that. We made, there was a motion and we already did that. Okay. Um, did you sign on behalf of the board? Yes. Okay. Um, what's next? That's the hazard mitigation plan if anybody wants to go back. And she needs to reschedule the second visit. Why wait, wait, wait a minute, I want to stop us. On the on the East Callis thing, Denise, you took the trouble and I appreciate it of adding other names. Mm -hmm. Why why on this one did we skip that step? Because I didn't make it. We but made. you didn't make the other one either, but you yeah, added it. I put it on letterhead for you. <laughs> After I opted to put it on letterhead myself, completely capable. So I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't see your email until after I had already done it. Well, so in the future, again, I'm just going to restate that whether you make it or you don't, we should all sign it. We're all here in person, we can all sign things. Well, we need to make that clear in the motion. We didn't. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm that's, sorry. That's I'm our sorry. obligation. But wait, wait. To decide who signs. We just signed something that had only one. Right. And wait, it only had it. one signature. Because, model. right. Wait. She signed it, but then we all signed it. Correct. And this, okay. but on that one we did, but on this one we didn't. And that's why I'm Which one? This certificate. Certificate. I mean, I don't care. Everybody can sign it. I don't care. Okay. But a lot of things come through from various agencies looking for one signature. It's their document. That's their document. 
Well, so, all right, Town Hall, oh, Town Highway 7. So we have to, and I'm, thanks to I think John's help, we have information on who the property owners are that adjoin Town Highway 7. And Reed had some information, which I appreciate, the lumberjack people or something, right? So we have to go through the, the process. So I want to know from the board, what is better, a weekend night or a weekend to do a site visit so we can get this done? Right. Later so weekend, is that four? The more it's, it's going to be a weekend. It's already getting kind of... Right, I mean, it's dark. I mean, we're doing the one tomorrow at 5. Right. It's dark by 6.30. Yeah. yeah. And I was reading the process. We do not have to walk the entire length of this town highway. I understood that we did. Yeah, I can send you the documents. I've been reading up on the process. So I just want to know if we set something. It doesn't have to be. Everybody doesn't have to go. I can try to be there. It's later in the afternoon if it's... <coughs> or the weekend. And we an probably want to do it before deer hunting, right? Yeah. <laughs> Weekends are generally better for me. Okay. Generally. Okay. Okay. Right. I want to do it early. I don't want to kill my Saturday. Two in the afternoon, I'm not coming. Early and Saturday morning is great. Saturday. Okay. All right. Good to know. Or That's Saturday all I wanted morning. to know. Deer season starts October. First weekend in October. I thought deer season started... Like November 13th. Perhaps both seasons. There's all the different pieces of weaponry. You won't hear the arrow coming. <laughs> I guess not. That's a good thing. Just wear red. Are crossbows allowed in archery season? No. Yes. Oh, they are? They are. They are. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I bet bad you are. news. <laughs> bad news. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll see what we can do. All right. That was it in Highway 7. <laughs> um, town Hall usage requests. We have gotten a couple of requests. One from the Old West Church folks right. who say, you know, it's cold in the Old West Church right, right now. Um, and they would like to use the bottom half of the town hall for, I think, if this is in the right order. Oh, no, it's not. Let me go back. Sorry. Um, oh, I know. She's, Donna sent this to, to us, and it didn't make it to the folder. Donna Fitch. Donna Fitch. Um, but it was an email. It was an email. Yeah, and I forwarded it. Yeah, everybody got it. So um, she would like to use the bottom half of the town hall to hold their Old West Church meeting because they don't have heat there. And she's asking permission to do so. Currently, the, historic society, the historical society uses the space for meetings because their files are here, which we plan for. And I, I could see there's probably, you know, let's say the Maple Corner Community Center folks, say their furnace went on the fritz and they need to want it to meet. They are sort of a town, they're a town group, non -profit, non profit group. So I just. There was another one too. Right, though. But I think we should do this one and then do that one. So, okay. So, so I guess I, I want to have, hear what the board thinks. Yeah, so my question is, are we getting this request instead of the friends because yeah. we haven't authorized, we have not, the select board has not opened yeah. the building? Well, I think it's a little gray. I mean, when we were talking with the friends about upstairs, right. the management agreement was only for the upstairs piece unless they had an event and they needed to use part of the downstairs. Oh, that could be granted okay. through the friends group. So this is more like, I said, you know, historical society uses this room for their meetings. There could be, I don't know, there's other nonprofits in town, like maybe the East Calis Fire District. It would be tens of amounts using the town office. Right. You know, I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, I can right. delegate this. Well, that's the thing. In theory, I don't have a problem with it, but I don't want to be doing yeah. onesie, onesie, twosie. We don't want to schedule. We, we need a policy that well, says right. everybody, everybody can use it. On, we, we, within whatever parameters we want to put, but right. what are the parameters we want so we are not dealing with one or two requests? So right. is this something where the town clerk or the town somebody can? can well, we kind of used to do that when COVID kicked in, right? And then also some people use this building, left messes behind, yeah. right? And that was the problem. And so that the messes further highlight. 
COVID irresponsibility, and it kind of got our staff very upset. Right, and I don't know that the town office staff wants to be responsible right. for scheduling meetings mm -hmm. here, overseeing them, coming in afterwards, and checking to make sure that they didn't exactly. leave a mess. So, when you do we? I know. Friends, maybe we do let the friends do it. I think if it's, I mean, I think we, what I'm looking for is there, is there a distinction between groups like Old West Church, Historical Society, maybe East Callis Fire District, board appointed committees, DAB, Historic right. Preservation, do you see any reason to make a distinction between those? If not, then the town office staff can put on the calendar it's being used by Old West Church Group on such and such a day. Well, I think the only distinction I'd make is if there's a conflict for on any particular date and time, a town functionary gets priority. Okay. And over a nonprofit. But well, uh, other than that, I think this thing is a public resource. We always intended it to be. Didn't right. we already say that town, anybody who has to comply with the open meeting law can use, we've already right. said that. But see, right, because in an Old West Church, right, we have to. But no, right. no, no, but you said town appointed, or town appointed committees. But nonprofits also. Non but they're not, right, right, but I'm just, we got, just we got distinguishing. to. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm making a distinction. So, Denise, you said town appointed committees, but I don't think you meant to. Because we've already covered them in open meeting, right. and they have to be here. Right. So we've already decided on that. Right. So now we're deciding on other, on you know, community-oriented nonprofits. Right. Right. And if and if the town hall isn't being used, do we have any problem with other groups using the space? I don't have a problem with it, but I do have a concern about. We can say community-oriented nonprofits, and then we're going to be wondering what that means. Sorry to be thinking like a lawyer. Well, and, and then also who's going to manage it? And my big thing is just who's going to manage it. Who's yeah. going to manage it? And is it fair? It? And is it fair to ask the town office staff to manage something that isn't related to a, a town Function. board board committee or commission? Right. right. I think we're unprepared for this. I, I mean. I'm going to test that. I'm, I could be talked out of it, but it, I feel I, 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 it was our, it's our, our hearts are there, but we're unprepared, we're not ready. We don't have a formal policy. Community oriented nonprofits is kind of very open interpretation. We don't have somebody to manage it. We don't have a public works director that would, you know, that might all come into. So it might be. And, and the email we saw was, it's a it's a community from well Old West Church is a community oriented nonprofit, but it's not a town building. It was ten people, right? Ten people can. Well, I'm never mind. I'm not sure what I was about to say. I think we're. I think we're. I think I'm just testing this concept that mm -hmm. we're not really ready to implement a, a, a policy short of. Onesie, twosie, one request at a time. Right, and that's the and that's the problem is we have been being asked onesie, twosies, and so far we've said no. Mm -hmm. Well, what? I don't know why. I, I got to say I don't know why we're hyper managing this place. To me, the only thing is when COVID's peaking and there are COVID requirements, there's something that we should have kicking in. That's very different. But I think right now we're still okay with people not wearing masks. None of us are wearing masks. And, I don't think we're going to wipe the tables down tonight, but we, you know, I do, we do care about messes being left behind. Mm -hmm. I think we just make it available to, I think if one Cal's resident wants to come here and study for their law exams, and this is the best place to do it, I think we let them use it if no one's using it. Uh, the only problem I see is, is who's going to put it on the calendar right. That's and the maintain it. Do we have a, we used to have Ernie Parrish used to be like the building manager. Who's the building manager? Andy. So we have Andy, if you can do it, schedule this. And if you can't do it, then we have to find someone else to do that. In lieu of us. And we you know, it should either be on a calendar or not, and who cares? And and I also say what well, I think we should have a policy that if anyone leaves a mess, yes. we have to hire someone to come in. We're not gonna have our office staff do it. No. We hire someone to come in, whatever that bill is, they're paying it. And they understand that when they walk in that door or when their name gets on that calendar. That's that requires that that's somebody, somebody to need a policy. Well, and that's what we wanted the friends to do. Well, we just tell upstairs. them. We just tell them that. But but then John, somebody's got to come in so that we know who to blame the mess on. 
Right? No, I thought we need that manager. Right. Give it to the friends, let them manage it, and, and yeah. keep track of the cleaning or, or... But, yeah, but this is that we have to decide, we have to decide, we have to decide tonight to approve the request with maybe some loose conditions, or to say no because we don't have the, have, we right. still need more I, I think time on our price. It's like the other matter we just did, let's approve the request, yeah. but let's agree that we have to put together a policy and delegate one person on this board to do it and come back to it. I think it's a one person job. Can can we put it can we put a time limit on how on our to keep ourselves, you know, maybe we try it for ninety days. Without a policy or with a policy? Well, we're if we're gonna approve Old West Church Group, mm -hmm. we're gonna have another thing that, that we have to process and well, we should try to bring the policy back with him. Right, within but, 30 days. Yeah. But but not have this, you know, going on and on and on. Ninety days um, that we will allow community community non community oriented community, nonprofits. Community members. Community members. Okay. And, is it just, and we're talking about just the downstairs. Yes. Well, we already. Yes. Well, so we got this downstairs. The other ninety request is. Well, that's right, because so, so we should deal with them one at a time, but right, that's why because we it. haven't authorized the friends to open up the upstairs either, right? Right. Yeah. So I think we're talking about 90 days, so, it's, so October 1. So by January 1, by this sunsets, January 1, this, what we're putting in place, sunsets January 1. But for this space, for the downstairs. For the downstairs space, sunsets January 1, by which time we will either you know, renew this discussion for another so 90 days. So this is a 90-day trial. So I've brought us a, a This something. is a 90-day trial period. Yep. In other words. By January 1. Um, for use of this space. See how it goes. And... Okay, hold on. I think, Katie, turn your mic on. I think they got You're disconnected. Awesome. We got disconnected. Awesome. Do, do we, Katie, turn your mic on. Do we need to go back? Oh. Katie, well, it's you need to go back. It's getting recorded, John. Uh, it was disconnected. Right, that's what you just said. So it wasn't, well. But you've got yeah, it, right? I'm just yeah, trying to. Yeah, but Katie may not have access to it. I'm trying to connect. I'm trying to reconnect this. So, okay, so do we need a motion or do we just need well, to? We have to at the moment, moment, don't we have to approve these two? We do them one at a time. So I, I think, John, that when Denise logs back in, she'll also be a host. Okay. And that will kind of get us going again. I'm trying to connect, Katie, and I can't get it to connect. We definitely need a motion for our our whatever we're doing for the next 90 days. Yeah. So. You want to make that, Sharon? This works. John, this, this works. Thank you. You okay. make it. You community members, 90 days. What else do we want to say? Don't leave a mess and we'll make you pay so, the bill. So, but we don't uh, have anybody to police it. The select, I, I move that the select board approve um, uh, an interim policy which would allow for the use of the town hall downstairs, up, downstairs area for um, up to night. This policy would be in effect for up to 90 days to allow members of the community upon request to use the hall. Um, they would also be responsible for uh, the cost of cleanup if they leave a mess behind. And we, and we will invoice them for that. Including, right, including you can't leave stuff in the trash. Including uh, they're, they, they're needing to clean out the waste baskets. All dishes need to be washed. The sink needs to be washed out. Bathrooms need to be cleaned. Bathrooms need to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. And um, the building needs to be in the condition that they got it in. And we're going to ask Andy to oversee this function. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. know. That's that's, that's a big right. add-on. Yeah, 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 without yeah. him present. I, I don't think that should be so part then, of our motion. So then, who's going to do that? Calendar. Exactly. Who's going to calendar? Um, maybe we can find someone, a volunteer from among the friends group, to volunteer in the in the interim to do the calendar. Okay. Yeah, to maintain a calendar. Well, we can check with we can check and see who might be available to do the so calendar. So that's not part of the motion, right? Right. 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 Um, we just, because if we can't find anybody, then and the policy. <laughs> the, the policy that John is included in John's motion exists only in our minutes because we don't have a written policy. Correct. 
unwritten, an unwritten but clearly articulated <clears throat> policy. And that's a long about way of saying I need a second. Second. <laughs> Can I, may I interrupt? This is Barbara. Nobody on the Friends has access to the website calendar to do the scheduling. So I, I, we would have to, who has the ability to? Katie. Katie could, uh, uh, yep. they could decide on a person, notify the town office, and Katie, and Katie could grant them act that one person access. Or... Katie doesn't work at the town office. No, they could notify Katie. So, Barbara, is your point that only you have to be you have to be physically in the town office to change the permissions on the calendar? No, she's clarifying what I said. I said it would notify the town office. Oh, I see. I see. Rick, do you know how we get me back in here? So you have a second? Um, have a second. Do we have any Mark is second here. Is there um, anything else we need to say about it? Well, I wonder, Katie can schedule things from home onto the calendar. I don't want to put one more thing on her plate unless she's okay with that. That if somebody... No, Calum, no Katie would just be granting a permission if she has control over that, and then that person would be Calendar, not Katie. Right, I, I guess it could be either Katie or Cliff to give that Yeah, that whoever, I, I thought Katie one of the web, One of the webmasters, why don't we say? To, to grant, yeah, it's a granting permission. It's That sounds like a 10 minute job. Yeah. Right. It's not, we are, just to be clear, we are not and asking Katie to manage right. the calendar. It's a one time, 10 minute job. Right to grant permission mm -hmm. for somebody else to manage the calendar, who is a volunteer. Good with that. Good moves, John. This happens every meeting. It's my disco uh, days. So have we, is there anything else we need to say about this? I don't think so. January Let's 1, see. Katie, you got January 1. Let's see how this and goes. And the select board does not need to pick the person. They can decide from among their group who's willing to do the job, to calendar the schedule, the scheduled events, and Katie would, or whoever, Cliff would grant them the special permission to, to access the calendar. All right, let's vote. vote. Okay, so let's vote. vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Now the next one. Yeah, now the next one is this, the request to do filming, and the reason this is different is because this is the upstairs. This is not even a town it's not even a, it's not like the old west church or maple corner community center people or east Cal's fire district people it's not any of those things this is a private function function right. and i guess i can you can still see but we again we west. approve the use of the downstairs for all community members but this is upstairs this is upstairs. right no, i'm just making clear right. so so, upstairs, the contract that is apparently not in effect because we're not letting them open it yet. We Well, we were working on a management agreement and we came and we ran into some issues. Then COVID hit. Um, they've been beating the pavement looking for somebody to ensure yeah. the use of that space upstairs and they, they've been trying and trying and trying and haven't been able to find anybody. So that's the, so because we, we approved the management contract. We didn't approve anything yet. We haven't approved it yet? What am I remembering? Yeah, I'm remembering you approved it. I guess I'd have to go back and look. I don't think so. Okay. I think there were some issues that we wanted them to work on. It's been it's been so it's been quite a while. No, no, no. I really feel like we did. Correct somebody well, let's check. correct me if I'm wrong. Because check. remember, because it included um, alcohol being our thing. Maybe that's not the management agreement. Is that something different? There's two things. And right? I said, why are we, no, no alcohol. And then there's a management agreement, then there's a policy for the use. Maybe it was I don't that. think, we may, we may have done the policy, but I don't think we did the management agreement. Okay. okay. We'll find out. But at any rate. So we have to decide on whether or not we're going to approve this request for filming. And you'll remember, we've had since COVID sort of let up, and even before COVID let up, we've had 
a Sorry. lot of requests to use that space upstairs. We have consistently said no. Yes. Because we haven't, we don't have these agreements in place. Correct. And so, my, I guess I feel like if you let one person do it, then you have to let everybody do it. And if we let somebody do this, do this now, right. then yeah. what grounds do we have to stand on right. to not have somebody want to hold some kind of an event up there? A okay. music event or a play. Okay. You know, everybody's dying to use the space upstairs, and I think I want to see it get used. I really, I really okay. ready. But we don't have, I don't think we have the pieces in place. And that's why I think this is different than, than this. And, and to be clear, PASIC will not ensure private events upstairs, we got that clarified. I think so. I know that they've been looking to get insurance, and it's really difficult. But we checked in with PASIC and they wouldn't cover that? Yeah. Even though it's well, in a town building? Well, it's, but, it's not, but it's not town use. No, right. I know, but it's a town building, so it's, it's about the town being sued. Right. It's not about their being sued. We well, don't we care put if they it get in minutes sued. and double you know, check. But if, if but, passive will cover because it's a town building, but, who cares? Well, I think we care. If, if there's an insurance issue, then any private event exposes us to that insurance issue. If there weren't an insurance issue, then we would have a man of. If there weren't an insurance barrier, we wouldn't have an insurance barrier. <laughs> no, but, but I don't know, what's the insurance? I, I, you know, it might be I'm forgetting. I, I don't remember, I, I don't know what the barrier was. Well, I, I'd, have was to, I'd have to go back and look at the minutes, but there Did was- Did we assume there was one and- Yeah, I can, can I, this is Barbara. Barbara. Oh, hey, yes, Barbara. Well, like Cliff, Cliff has informed us that that was the first place he went was was to VLCT. Mm -hmm. They will they do the town insurers the town hall for municipal activities. They will not insure non municipal activities. Right. Well, hang on. Here we go. Well, hang on then though. So so the the request for upstairs is a clear non municipal activity, right. but so is the Old West Church. But they're yeah, I see. but the things upstairs are not like a meeting. These are meetings. These are, in my mind, events. Right, but but the but the so so the difference in our our um, risk exposure is the riskiness of the event. Is that what you're saying, Denise? That a meeting, everybody sits on their butts and nobody is doing. You know, there's nothing. There's no dancing. You know what? what like, plays. Or no, I think mean, we need to invite a passive rep in here by Zoom or otherwise because I don't like this seat of the pants stuff. I mean, they could say we're covering town events or non town events or town events, mm -hmm. and then we do a town event, and like we had with the crane rollover, right. we're like, oh, we don't cover that one. Well, so, you know? so, true. so, we, so have to, we need so to we, know what the, ex, the extent well, of the coverage is. Right, but if it's true, so, so we need to acknowledge if, if what we, you know, if rely on the information Barbara just provided to us, if our passive coverage currently in place covers the building for municipal events, then what we've just authorized takes us outside of that coverage. Right. We don't know. Well. Because that's, it's, it's Cliff saying, saying to, Cliff, to Barb. We do know. Right. Right. Well, they, bar, they bar. The West Church meeting. If anybody falls or if, right. if the town hall is damaged, it's not covered. Right, right, Barb. What I'm suggesting, I'm not doubting Cliff said that. What I'm doubting is the fine points of that. I'd like to see the the language, the exclusion language that's in our policy. It would be our current policy, the extent of coverage of our current policy, and the exclusion from that policy. So if we could have someone from Passive come in and direct us to that language or email us uh, the excerpt that says where, where and why we're not covered, that's great. But Cliff telling Barbara or telling Donna, who tells Barbara, who tells us, you know, I, or even Cliff telling us, I, I don't have it firsthand from the person who's the expert on that. Well, and I don't know what the exact language is. So why don't we try to, are. Then why so, don't we get passive to come Yeah, that's what I was suggesting. Yes, yes, I agree with that. But even, even 
even if we don't have the fine details. The best information we have is that we do not have insurance coverage for certain kinds of events that 10 minutes ago we authorized to occur in this building. And if something happens, then we knew or should have known that we were not covered for those events. You know, I don't know that we're I'm not. willing to take the risk to have a meeting of the OS Church Association. I, I, I just can't. I'm you know, I, I, I'm a bureaucrat by training, and I, I, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole as a select board member to be so particular that we can't allow anyone to walk in this building. You know, then, then, well, people park outside and we've allowed them access to life. I'm not pissed on you, Sharon. Just, no, I know. This is I'm why, not taking it for you know, I, I, we're, we're I could have said the same thing last meeting and I would be pissing on myself right now because it, it, we allow, we tell people, come use our public Wi-Fi. What if they go in that parking lot and they, they go outside, to, they threw a cigarette out the window and went to pick it up and they trip and fall and sue us. I mean, where does this end? I'm yeah. not taking it personally. I'm just, I, I I'm just, I, I, not at all. It's, but it is, a, it is a fact. We have just, we have just agreed to a policy, an unwritten but clearly articulated policy yeah. that has some risk associated with it because we're not confident that we have insurance coverage for it. Well, and right now, based on that, the kind of bring up old baggage, we got sued for a crane rollover um, and the cost of resurrecting that crane from the ditch because there was an instruction given by East Montpelier Fire Department to hire a very expensive crane to pull that out. Right. And Passive said, we're not covering you. So to this date, we still have East Montpelier Fire Department working on our collective behalf. And if any, any instruction I give every, any day in Calus, we could be sued for. Any instruction. Toby saying, you know, move that emergency hose over there. And, and you know, John someone moves and point. trips and they sue the town of Callis, you know, because they're our proxy. We're back in the same boat. And, you know, we continue to have fire coverage with East Montpelier Fire Department. I mean, there's certain levels of risk we take, and it's just the way it is. I, I, I'm not an attorney, and, you know, I just, you can't doubt it. We got close to take. Bring this back. Yeah, you know, um, it sounds to me like, as to these two, the first one yes, the second one no. And that's what I'm hearing. Well, that's that, just me being loud. No, 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 no. The first one so, yes. Yeah, I think you could show a little bit of that. She's just pointing out a problem. Mm -hmm. The second one no, okay. because it's upstairs. Right. Okay. And an agreement that, for the moment. That, that somebody, I don't know who is going to do it, is going to look into this. You, Denise is going to look into this and try to put together a policy right, and I'm going to that works for the it. building. And part of that is going to be to get clarity on what our insurance covers and what doesn't. And, and to why? talk to old, what, to talk to the associate, what's it called? Passive. Friends. friends oh. And their attempts, because it seems to me that insurance is the big it's going to end up being a big deal about the use of this building generally, and we really don't know what the well, hell what we I'm, think yet. What I'm hearing is that we should get passive in here to talk to us directly well, instead of well second be, and third. It may well be, yeah. And they'll, they'll come Otherwise, to the these, I mean, you can call Frank and just have a conversation. Right. With Cliff. It's Frank, what's his name? Who's Frank? Fred? Fred. Fred at passive. Oh, yeah. I mean, right. I guess I'd like to get him in here to talk to the okay. full board. Sooner okay. rather than later. So. Right. Because we've given ourselves yeah. 90 I days. Want to hear that, right? So, okay. I think we're I think we're clear. Okay. Yes and no. Yes. So, yes to the Old West Church Association. No. That's okay. All right. Yes to Old West Church under the under, under the, the guise of the under the broader right. Yeah, but I think that, yeah. Yeah. Because we don't know what we think yet. But but yeah, I do. Katie, can we make sure that our minutes say that we are going to hear from passive sooner rather than later? Because if that well, 90, as soon as I can get them scheduled, if that ninety-day window closes and we haven't heard them, oh well. Well, I mean, I'm thinking that they'll be here in the next meeting or the meeting after. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, I don't want. I don't want to let this sit. No, this is no, 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 sit. No. It's and people, like I said, people really want to use both spaces. Yeah, I'm really worried. 
Um, and I want to make sure that I'd love to have everybody be able to use that space and then I'm really worried that there's going to be problems. Right. right. Let's find out. So let's let's get to the bottom of it. Yeah. All right. And then who's going to, so we are saying, do we need to see any, say any more formal no than we have in the, we just, we don't have a policy, we're not prepared for the, we need further investigation and insurance on private use of the upstairs space. Right. Yeah, right. I can actually right. put that and that's, explanation. And, and that's consistent what was, what we've been telling people for the last six months that have asked to use it. Right. And I, we, did we make an exception for one? I totally agree. Totally agree. Let's move Let's on. Move on. Okay. So um, we do we do have um, a um, recommendation from the planning commission to appoint a new zoning administrator. Bob um, Martin. Martin has stayed on, you know, reviewing applications and doing yada yada yada. But, and he said he would do that until we appointed somebody else. So, um, I don't know if the board would like to go into the executive se session to discuss this as a personnel issue. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else we need to do? Not right now. An open session? Okay. Not right now. Um, okay. so I mean, it's, it's already, over, it's, well, it's so, already, so, so we have two after, issues. We already have two after nine. Why don't we go into executive session on two different issues? Yes, one is contracts and one is personnel. Yes, yeah, so some move that we go into executive session pursuant to one PSA section 313 to cover personnel, which is a different section than contracts. Under right. that. Right, it's all section, it's all 313. It's all 313, we just need to identify which one. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, Katie. Contracts I don't know.